with mental health concerns on the rise, could artificial intelligence be the key to improving how we diagnose and treat these conditions? With World Mental Health Day just around the corner, we look at how technology is transforming healthcare. Now, most of us are familiar with traditional methods like talking to a therapist or maybe you fill out a questionnaire and someone assesses our answers and our mental health. Now, this process, though, can be subjective and leaves room for error. Experts believe AI can make things a little more accurate by analysing patterns in speech and behaviour and even physical data to detect early warning signs. But AI doesn't just help with diagnosis, it's also making support more accessible with chatbots and virtual therapists offering real-time help anytime, anywhere. In the digital space, platforms like TikTok and Instagram are becoming popular for mental health advice. Advocates and therapists are using social media to share tips on everything from self-care to anxiety relief, though mis uh, misinformation, I should say, remains a challenge. While AI can support diagnosis and treatment, doctors stress it cannot replace the human touch. Afifa Arafin explores how AI and clinicians are working hand-in-hand -hand to offer more personalised mental health care. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, Malaysia has seen a troubling rise in mental health challenges. A recent national survey revealed that approximately 1 million Malaysians suffer from depression. That's double the number recorded in 2019. Alarmingly, half of these individuals have reported thoughts of self-harm or suicide. Having experienced a severe depression himself, 40-year-old Dr. Jess Wong and his team were inspired to create an application which uses artificial intelligence or AI to detect early signs of depression. Users can just scan a QR code and record a brief 90-second voice passage. And books. We match these changes in your voice and brain activity. To the app will then analyse vocal characteristics to generate a mental health report. Then they come up with clarity, crispness, control, uh, speech rate, energy, liveliness, energy, octave, bass, tone. You can actually know a person if they're suffering from depression or stress level or not. So uh, they realise that this is something that uh, we can help the nation to make it a better place. So that's how we come up with the app. Why app? Because easy access. More than half a million users have accessed the app since it launched in July last year. Medical practitioners say the rise of such apps or online chatbots can improve mental health care in Malaysia, where a shortage of qualified professionals limit access to vital services. With only about 500 psychiatrists here in Malaysia, that works out to be one psychiatrist per 200,000 individuals, and that's significantly lower than the World Health Organization's recommended ratio of one psychiatrist per 10,000 individuals. And with the increase in awareness of mental health related uh, issues, and with the, 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 the lack of a number of uh, clinicians, this huge gap has forced us to look at other options to get treatment. And AI, digital technology, chat uh, uh, boxes are definitely an option lah. all right is it helpful yes because it provides an option is it definitive i don't think so while tools like ai can facilitate support dr prem emphasizes that it cannot replace the nuanced understanding of human professionals there's a lot of considerations when it comes to ai that it's going to take us a while to specialize i think that culture specificity we have not um, uh, what you call uh, 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 learnt yet, all right? Now, whether it's medicine or psychology or, 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 or any kind of clinical work, we need to be culturally sensitive to specific needs of different people. While more work is needed to effectively implement AI in mental health care practices, particularly regarding data privacy and ethics, it is a significant step forward in improving access to support. By utilising AI, this initiative raises awareness and encourages proactive mental health management, providing hope to many in need. Afifa Arafin, CNA, Kuala Lumpur.
For more insights, let's speak now with Dr. Maria Hennessy. She is Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology at James Cook University. Professor Hennessy, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Before we get into AI, I just want to know very quickly, I mean, how well have we been coping with mental health, you know, in, in these current very charged and distressing times, there are wars, the world powers don't get along, and we're very deeply polarized. How do you think we're doing? Uh, I think it's probably um, quite a challenge for all of us not to be really deeply touched by what's going on in the world around us at the moment, whether or not it's wars or natural disasters. Um, and so that's more a kind of a global impact on our own individual sense of well-being that we have here in Singapore, for example. Um, Dr. Hennessy, do you um, use AI in the course of your work as well? I mean, would you, you know, suggest going to TikTok or going to Instagram even as a starting point, you know, as a counselling tool or a tool for someone who might be seeking some sort of guidance or help? I think that there's a really, really big uh, impact that social media can have, and I think it's generational. Uh, for example, I would go to Facebook first, uh, but I know that my teenage sons would be on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and so there is a role for that social media to play uh, in getting out uh, good quality information um, and it letting people be able to access it when they otherwise might not be able to, to find that information. Let's talk about chatbots uh, specifically in supporting individual mental health. I wonder, are they primarily effective for you know, mild anxiety, depression, stress or addiction, or do they extend beyond these areas? And doctor, how effective and safe are they really in comparison to you know, traditional clinical assessments and treatments? Yeah, I think uh, AI and chatbots is probably more a dream than a reality at the moment in terms of how effective they can be for our own individual care. Um, there's, there's a long way to go with them. At the moment, they're quite basic, um, but a bit like social media, they're there to provide uh, basic, uh, good quality, accessible information for people who otherwise might have difficulty finding it. But they certainly don't replace talking to a clinician uh, and at the moment, they're kind of at that very basic, you know, adjunct level of help. And Dr. Hennessy, um, can you help us, if you like, understand what are some of the potential dangers of, of uh, someone seeking help on social media? I mean, if, I suppose if you get the right, you know, person or the right information, it can be useful. But have you come across instances where the, the, the guidance and the suggested course of action has been detrimental, perhaps? Uh, absolutely. I think there's a lot of examples of that that we could probably come across uh, ourselves personally. I think the key to getting uh, around this issue is for people to be a little bit more uh, literate about what um, uh, where the mental health advice is coming from. You know, if it's not coming from um, a, a university, if it's not coming from your local health service, if it's not coming from a professional society, uh, if it's just coming from an influencer, for example, uh, they're not qualified. They can talk about their own personal experiences, but they're not qualified to give good advice to others. So I think a lot of the issues that we're having can be around improving the mental health literacy of our, our own people around us, our own population. Mm. And, uh, Doctor, also AI mental health industry uh, is unregulated at this moment, has no guidelines to keep consumers safe. What sort of ethical guidelines should be there to ensure the safe use of AI and mental health support? And as for the users, uh, what sort of specific red, red flag, should I say, should they look for when engaging with these services? Yeah, look, I think the ethical frameworks are something that needs to be developed collaboratively, uh, both all, at all layers of government and uh, all layers of the professional community and the community and the end users themselves. Um, but I would say red flags to look out for are people offering a quick fix uh, and something quite simple that you can do that will, you know, change your life if you do it three times a week. You know, our own mental health is not that simple. Uh, and I think it's also to, important to remember that mental health is not just about mental illness. 
it's it has two spectrums, and one is our own individual well-being, which tends to get neglected uh, in the conversations about mental illness and psychological distress. And Dr. Hennessy, I wonder if you've actually tested any of these chatbots and and uh, AI based uh, counseling tools. I mean, my impression is that you know if someone w was facing mental distress, what they would be looking for would be perhaps, a listening ear, someone to share with, perhaps guidance on the next uh, best available course of action. I mean, how have they performed, uh, to your knowledge so far, on these fronts? Yeah, it's certainly a developing field of evidence, and it's quite slim evidence at the moment. At best, they can give basic uh, information and communication, but they don't yet have that capacity to give you that empathy and that sense of rapport that you look for in a good mental health clinician. And it's that empathy and rapport that actually accounts for about 50% of the effectiveness of what we do. So potentially over time, I know Google and Amazon are trying to train uh, AI to have empathy, that would make a big difference for folk. But at the moment, it's quite basic. Mm. Exactly. It's still early on. But doctor, is there any emerging trends or technologies in mental health support that you find you know, particularly promising or concerning? Uh, I think concerning is jumping on the bandwagon of AI and chatbots and not kind of understanding that they're a basic tool that's still developing. They've got a lot of potential, but we're nowhere near them yet. Um, but I think the, the developments that excite me at the moment uh, are around encompassing wellbeing into um, the understanding of what mental health involves. I think there's there's enormous potential with um, AI to move forward uh, understanding of what wellbeing is and how that supports mental health as well. All right, Dr. Hennessy, we look forward to these developments uh, taking shape as well. Thank you very much for your time uh, on the show this morning. Dr. Maria Hennessy is Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology at James Cook University.